and happy Easter. Welcome to worship with us at Christ Church Uniting. I am Pastor Kate, and we are so grateful for your presence. Whether you're joining us here in person or joining us online, whether you come every Sunday or once a year, or if this is your first time, we hope you feel very welcome here because you are very welcome. As we gather for worship each week, we take a moment and we center ourselves as we prepare to come to the threshold of the Holy One. We pause and get comfortable in our seats, and we will take a breath together. We will breathe in and out. We unite our breath, we unite our hearts, We unite our purpose. We are here to worship. And as we worship, we light a candle to remind us of the presence of Jesus in our midst, illuminating our pathway, guiding us on in our journey of life and faith. And this Sunday on Easter, we celebrate that from the dark of a tomb, light was born. Resurrection and new life win the day. God's love and creativity and compassion are stronger even than death. In church, we have a special call and response on Easter where I say Christ is risen and you say he is risen indeed. So I will say Christ is risen This morning we will pray and sing, hear scripture and sermon, take communion and add more beautiful flowers to our cross. If at any point you feel like coloring, we have a coloring table if you would like to have your your hands busy. And there is a brunch after church and you are invited to all of it. We have a responsive call to worship that our friend Lauren will lead us in as we prepare our hearts to worship. This is a day like every other day. Alarm clocks beeped. Covers were removed. (laughs) Wait, 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 wait for it. Easter happens when we're least expecting it. Okay, I'm going to start again because this day is like every other day. And I will respond to you that alarm clocks beeped. Covers were removed, coffee was brewed, weary bodies came to life. And yet, this day is like no other. For the sun rose and we knew it was a miracle. The tomb was empty and they knew it was love. So again and again we say, The longest night is over. Death has lost its sting. Jesus is among us. Alleluia. Amen. Again and again and again. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. And if that didn't get our hearts pumping, please rise again in body or spirit as we sing our opening hymn, Christ is Risen Today. It's number 450 if you want to find a hymnal or the words I hope will magically appear on the screens. Let's stand and sing together. Two, three, two.
Hi, Ellie, you want to join us up here with Ethan? Happy Easter. Yes. All right. Well, we have been journeying through Lent, and today is Easter. And so we're going to find, we're going to find the right bead, and we have to look really carefully because they're all white, but one of them has a cross on it. Can you find the one with a little cross on it? <gasps> Ethan is going to put that on. But Ellie, how many other white beads are in the basket? Eight, Eight which is a guess because... Um, we know that we are now in the season of Easter, so our color is white for today. But Easter continues with Sundays in Easter. So that's why we have a whole bunch of white ones. And then as we go through, we'll keep adding and to make. Those of you that haven't been to our church before are wondering, why are we looking in a little basket? So let's explain. Um, we have had help along the Lent journey to build a little How the Church Tells Time. Hello, good morning, welcome. If you'd like to come on up, you, you can just be completely on the spot, or you can just listen from there. Welcome, happy Easter. So we've got a way to tell time all the Sundays in the church year, and so we have done all our purple Lent Sundays. Now we're going to start building it so it's going to be a big circle, which is really cool. So it just keeps going. So during Lent, we talked about how we give thanks to all the senses in our bodies. And now with Easter, we get to use our whole bodies, our, all our senses, to move out into the world and be a loving presence like Jesus was. And not just on Easter, but year-round. And that's kind of the challenge. So you know what's happening right after Worship. We're going to hop over there, right? And what are we going to do? We're going to have a scavenger hunt. A lo yeah, with eggs, right? We're going to have a scavenger hunt with eggs, which is very cool. And you are very welcome to join us. And if, um, you know, you don't have to be a certain age. If you like hunting for things, um, it'll be really fun. And so, kind of like an egg hunt we are going to be thinking about carrying Easter forward, and we are hunting for ways to bring love into the world. People that need a special hug or maybe uh, a phone call or maybe a little picture that you color that you say, I want to give this gift to you. Those are ways that we can bring Easter forward, that we can hunt and find ways to share God's love. Let's put our hands on the basket and have a prayer. Dear loving and creative God, thank you for the gift of Easter. Thank you for the life of Jesus. May we continue to find ways to embody his love. Amen. Thank you, Beth and children. Each week before we hear the scripture that has been chosen for the day, we pause for a prayer for illumination. We make time and space to prepare our hearts, our ears, our minds, our spirits to hear a word from God. So this week, we will prepare our hearts by singing one verse of Be Thou My Vision. It's number 450. Be Thou My Vision. Let's prepare hearts for the hearing of the word as together we sing.
Hear these words from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. And as we hear these words of Scripture, let us seek in them the Spirit's word to each of us. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look. There is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. And all that had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterward, Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. Holy wisdom, holy word, Thanks be to God. Oh 
Okay, we practiced this earlier. When I say Christ is risen, you say he is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's not your fault. I grew up in a very open, progressive household. No questions were off limits. That's why I felt relatively confident going to seminary to get a master's in divinity. Some of my friends really struggled with new learning and questioning that happens in seminary. New questions are always dangerous. They have the power to crack even the strongest foundation of faith and cause the whole scaffolding to come a-tumbling down. But I didn't really think I had some essential foundation of faith that could crack. When exposed to new questions or a new piece of evidence, I would just take in all of the data and make necessary adjustments to my beliefs. Belief in creation as literal fact, that was easy to let go. I mean, no one was there to witness it. How could we know God didn't work through a Big Bang? A lack of archaeological evidence for biblical stories like Noah's flood or Moses' exodus. Okay, good fiction still teaches truth. But in my first year theology class at Bright Divinity School, I was shocked to learn that I was in the minority of future pastors who believed in the actual physical resurrection of Jesus. That was my essential belief that had never been questioned, nope, not once. Of course it happened. I mean, if Jesus wasn't actually physically raised from the dead, what is the whole point of any of this? Resurrection and new life must conquer death. And no, it doesn't make sense physically or biologically, but that's the point. It's a miracle. You can't change the laws of physics, but God can do whatever God wants. Bend the laws of the universe? Sure, why not? God set them up. I was sure it happened. It happened. It had to have happened. I'm pretty sure it happened. <laughs> oh my gosh, what if it didn't happen? The women prepare their burial spices while it is still dark. Maybe they couldn't sleep, needed to keep their hands busy to quiet their minds in the midst of grief. The smell of the spices, perhaps myrrh and aloe, fills their nostrils as they set out while it is still dark to go to the tomb. Their grief is heavy and all they can see is darkness. It isn't a well-thought-out plan. In numbness of grief, our plans are rarely well conceived. In their eagerness to perform some kind of meaningful ritual, they have failed to plan for someone to roll away the stone that seals the tomb. I wonder what they felt as they walked. Grief, perhaps images of Jesus' death, weighed heavy in their minds. Loss, a spiritual leader taken from them too soon. Anxiety, what happens now? Frustration, how could we have forgotten something as important as rolling the stone away? 
resoluteness. We'll figure it out. We're resourceful. We have a job to do. When the women arrive at the tomb, the stone is already rolled away. Confusion. A young man dressed in white. Fear. What is he doing here? Do not be afraid, he says, the common greeting of angels. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised. A glimmer of hope. He is not here? Resurrection? Jesus has done it before. His friend Lazarus walked out of a tomb. The messenger says, go tell the disciples and Peter. Wait, I thought Peter was one of the disciples. But it says the disciples and Peter. Perhaps Peter no longer considers himself a disciple. After all, he denied any association with Jesus after his arrest. But but tell Peter too, and they will all see Jesus in Galilee. Just like he said, Jesus' word is trustworthy. In the dark of the empty tomb, God was birthing new resurrection life. Jesus is not here. He is going ahead of you. Relief, hope, amazement, fear. After Jesus died, there was suddenly the possibility that these women and Jesus' disciples could have done something else. They might have gotten off the hook with this whole following thing. When Jesus didn't conquer Rome, but was conquered by Rome, killed by the powers of the state, following surely became less appealing. And with Jesus' death, it was unnecessary. We don't need to follow anymore. I wonder if that was a relief. These women have seen just how dangerous following Jesus can be. It can lead to death. And this angel says, Jesus is going ahead of you. You have to keep following. So they flee from the tomb in terror and amazement. Jesus is not dead. The movement lives on. The sun begins to rise, illuminating the sky, splashing colors of cobalt and amber, rose and violet. In the earliest manuscripts, the end of the gospel according to Mark is that the women hear the good news and they flee in terror and amazement and said nothing to anyone. I wonder how long it took for them to find their courage to speak up and share this wondrous, wondering news. They must have gotten brave, decided the risk of following was worth it. These women, not called disciples, were the ones who witnessed everything, the miracles, the arrest, Jesus' pain and anguish, his death the tomb. And because they followed the whole way, even when the way seemed impossible, they are the first to glimpse resurrection, to hear the good news that life after death is possible. They are the first to preach resurrection to the disciples. They are entrusted the good news because who is more in need of hearing good news than those who have experienced pain and trauma and death? These are the people to whom Jesus entrusts the most important story that God's love is more powerful than anything, even death. The story is there is nowhere you can go that God has not been. No matter how low you've sunk, God can reach you. The good news didn't start with the inner circle with the disciples. The good news didn't start in the church from good, upstanding, powerful religious people. The story of Jesus' resurrection began with these women who were struggling with grief and trauma and post-traumatic stress, who needed a word of hope and promise, who needed a reminder of love that no matter how powerless they felt, God chose powerlessness to prove love. What if the resurrection of Jesus didn't physically happen? We can't know with any certainty that's part of faith and trust. But church, 
the proof of resurrection is all around us. Resurrection happens every day. Our friends who have overcome addiction have a story to tell about new life in sobriety. Our neighbors who have been released from the Women's Community Correctional Center have a message about what it feels like to be chained and find freedom. Clients at Family Promise have perspective about finding stability and safety after experiencing houselessness. People released from Castle Hospital's inpatient behavior health services have something to say about support and care and compassion and mental health services and new life. Our LGBTQ youth who've been kicked out of their house and found support at RISE surely have a story to tell about acceptance and love. These are people, neighbors, friends, strangers who are living resurrection. They have gone through trauma and grief and hell and death, and they have come out the other side and found transformation and new life where it didn't seem possible. My friend Lisa has found a beautiful life of joy and laughter after unexpected divorce. My grandma, who watches online every week, has found new life and friends at Wildwood Senior Living after the death of my grandfather. The iconic banyan tree in Lahaina burned when the town was decimated and tiny green sprouts have begun to grow. Resurrection happens every single day. It is not confined to a tomb 2,000 years ago. It is not confined to the walls of the church. God's resurrection love begins on the margins. The good news comes to those who need it most first. May we become witnesses to God's resurrection by engaging with neighbors and strangers and friends who have endured much trauma and reminding them of God's love and new life. May we be open to hearing stories of resurrection so that God's love and transformation might continue right here and right now. Amen. In the season leading up to Easter, we've had a piece of artwork to guide our time of reflection and connecting to God through the beauty of the world. Our piece this morning is called The Light of the World by our very own Jan Stiles. I invite you to look at this piece here in person or on the screen. I'll give you a moment to soak it in before I read the artist's statement. On the third day, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, quietly and stealthily went to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body with spices. Imagine the shock they must have felt on seeing the huge stone rolled away and the fear when they saw the angel sitting on the tomb. His appearance was like lightning and his raiment was white as snow. The angel said that Jesus had risen from the dead. He told them he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him and to hurry to tell the good news. The women ran to do this, but the men regarded these words as an idle tale and did not believe them. In Galilee, the risen Christ meets with the disciples and they believe. This painting is streaked with bright, joyful colors and movement. I envision the sky with joyful beams of light, Jesus making his followers aware that God is seeking relationship. Jesus is seen as the light or path to travel toward God and with God. Jesus is the light of the world who gives us God's message and of love and compassion. Jesus' constant message is that now there is a new beginning. Follow the teachings of Jesus, practice social justice, be inclusive of all people, be nourished by God. Jesus is the pathway 
and the light. I invite you to remain in your seats and join in our reflective hymn number 250 on your screen or in hymnals around the first and third verses. During the season of Lent, as we have been leading up to Easter, our prayers have been embodied. We have written our prayer requests and gotten up and pinned them to the cross. And today, whether our prayers have been answered yes or no, or whether we are still waiting for an answer to our prayers, the cross is empty. There is new life and new flowers that are beginning to bloom. This morning, our prayers have been transformed. And as we pray together, you will be invited to come forward. There are a variety of flowers that you may choose from. And as a prayer of thankfulness, as a prayer for new life, you can pin a flower to the cross to continue beautifying, to continue aiding in new life. If you want to pray by lighting a candle, that is also available to you. After we flower our cross, we will close with a prayer together and say the Lord's Prayer. Words will be on your screen, but use whatever language is most comfortable for you. Are there any prayer requests, any joys or concerns that need to be spoken aloud this morning when we pray together? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. We're giving thanks for Courtney's 15 years ago being baptized in the ocean. Beautiful. New life. Thank you. What else? What else are we praying for today? Yeah. For family that visits when they can. What else? Okay, then I invite you to, to come forward and let us pray.
God who rose, resurrect us. We've belonged to communities, workplaces, and spiritual spaces that have demanded our death far more than they ever advocated for our life. Let us find joy today. Remind us that any spirituality which is always death, never resurrection, is a farce. What liberation we taste today, may we crave in full as we refuse to wander back to the chains that once held us. May joy find us, not a joy absent of story or sorrow, but a joy whose allegiance is to memory, a joy that is not quick to forget the agony we have experienced or dismiss the doubts that we have, but a joy that reminds us to rise and meet hope nonetheless, knowing our liberation is whispering to us from its empty grave. God, we give you thanks that 15 years ago, Courtney was baptized in Mother Ocean on Easter, a new beginning, new resurrection life. We give you thanks for family visits, which give us new life and joy. For all of these prayers and more, we know that we are held in you. And we pray all of these things through Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from glory. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this table, we remember that Jesus gathered with his friends, and when he had taken the bread and blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them and said, This is my body broken for you, my life lived vulnerably for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he poured it out and he gave it to them and said, Take this and drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the new and the everlasting covenant. Into this cup you may pour your worries, your anger, your questions. And out of it, draw new life, new faith, resurrection. In a moment, you will be invited to come forward, take a piece of bread and dip it in the cup, then turn and greet your neighbor and smile as you return to our seats and wave to our friends joining us online. If you would prefer to be served in your seat, we will have Lauren come and bring communion. There are prepackaged crackers and juice if your germs feel more comfortable with that. Uh, We also have gluten-free crackers in a small bowl here if that is needed for you. In addition to or instead of taking communion, you are always invited to light a candle or to add another flower to our cross. You can grab a star word from our table, a random word to help guide you in your prayer life or spiritual journey this week. When you come, you may also bring an offering and place in the basket. This Easter morning, we joyfully celebrate that God came to walk among us. 
God shared our sorrow and grief, our hope, showing us a better way, the way of love. And today we celebrate that Jesus is still in our midst. Jesus is here in the laughter and tears, the hopes and fears, the bread and the cup. Jesus meets us right where we are and invites all of us, each and everyone, to come to table and to eat. No matter who you are or where you're from, no matter if you have been denied before, no matter who you love, no matter your religious background or membership or faith tradition or citizenship or age or ability or sexual orientation or gender or race or criminal background or social class or housing status, you are welcome at this table. This is not my table. It is not a Presbyterian or Disciples of Christ table. This is Jesus' table. And these gifts of bread and juice are for you. Come.
cross. It's just a cross made beautiful with our prayers. It's just a little bowl among all of the things on this table. It's just a basket outside to receive our offerings. Just a few diapers or paper towels or hand sanitizer for family promise. Just a check written or an online button pushed. But every gift of time and talent and treasure is blessed and multiplied by the God who is still creating beloved community, still being resurrected in actuality in the things that we say and the things that we do for each other and for this world that God still loves. So we thank you for your gifts, and we honor that as we stand in body or spirit and sing the Hawaiian doxology. Please be seated. The flowers that beautify our sanctuary are given by everyone, bought at Target and cut in backyards and from all over Island, and we are grateful for the beauty and new life that they represent. So thank you for sharing those. A uh, few announcements. Our uh, adult education, our book study continues next Sunday. It runs from uh, 8.30 to 9.15 Sunday morning uh, at our coloring table over there. We are uh, continuing to read through practices of faith with a new practice each week. And next Sunday, we are discussing forgiveness. So come and talk about forgiveness next week. Uh, immediately following worship today, you are invited to stay for brunch, uh, fellowship, eat, enjoy, hang out, meet someone new. If you, if you have nothing to do, no Easter brunch plans, please stay and fellowship with us. Uh, next Saturday, April 6th, is our next churchwide hike. We are going to meet at 9 o'clock here at church and walk down to uh, the Marsh Trail. It's a two-mile trail, um, but no shade, so bring your water and your sunscreen and see the view of the mountains in our very own backyard and enjoy God's creation. Everyone is welcome. And uh, on April 12th, we will have Vespers on the Lanai. That is our uh, evening of local music and poetry that is usually on the lanai but will be in the sanctuary due to the musician's setup. Um, so at 7 o'clock April 12th, we are going to welcome Ka Anohai... Uh-oh. <laughs> Hold on. Ka Anohi Waya Nue Nue Hula Studio and Palapu Street Band. Thank you. I'm still learning. Please correct me. Um, and then I will be with you, last announcement I have, I will be with you next week and then away for three weeks for continuing education and some vacation. So our friend Reverend Luana Uluave, who's a chaplain at Punahou, will be filling our pulpit while I'm away. We're continuing our uh, new series on resurrection stories. So we will talk about real life stories of life after death. Uh, any other announcements that I've forgotten this morning? Okay, great. Our closing hymn, Rise in Body or Spirit, for number 246, Christ is Alive.
We know the fear of hard days and the grief of long nights. We know the ache of saying goodbye, and we know the darkness before the dawn. And still we believe the sun will rise. God will draw near. We will march toward justice. The tomb will be empty. Love will win. We believe. May we rise. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.